Good morning. We greet you this morning in the name of our Father who art in heaven, recognizing that this is our Father's world, and all things do work together for good to them that love God. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we just pray that you work all things out, work out the glitches within the system this morning, that we will have a strong and a good live recording. We ask your blessing upon those that are in the audience. We just pray that the word will fall on good ground, anoint, anoint the heart and the understanding of our teacher, that we will receive a preached word, a taught word, to the glory of God for the good of all. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, working all things together for good, we just pray that God will bless us this morning as we will receive our Sunday school lesson taught by Trustee Ivory Hugey. We just ask that you receive him in the name of our Father. Amen. amen. Good morning, Garden Grove in attendance and also everyone that's tuning in with us this morning. Uh, I want to say that I uh, continue to pray for me and I'll continue to do the same for you. We can't do enough of that. Uh, today's lesson, risk taker, and we'll be uh, coming from Acts and Romans, and uh, we'll have those up on the screen so you can see about Acts 1, 18, 1 through 3, and verses 18 through 21, 24 through 26, and Romans 16, 3 through 4. Risk taker. Risk taker, we could say for the faith. Um, as we know, this is Black History Month, and we've had lots of our forefathers and who's gone on before us and who's taken a lot of risk for us to enjoy the liberties that we have today. Um, they were risk takers. Uh, even for the faith, you know, uh, when you talk about doing slavery, they having to hide and, and to worship, uh, at least the way they wanted to worship. So they've always been a lot of risk takers in, in our history risk takers. And today we look at a risk taker uh, for Christ. Paul, of course, you know, Paul was Saul. He persecuted Christians, killed them, and he had an experience on the Damascus Road that changed his life and changed how he did things. So we look at the risk taker, a, a great risk taker here. Um, of course, today we will see in our lesson that this is his second missionary journey. He had three journeys, but this is the second one we'll look at today. And uh, he faces some troubles. If you look in uh, 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 11, and it talks about some of the risks. He was talking about the Corinthian church. And in verse 24 and 25, he talks about he had five times he took 39 lashes. They didn't give you 40 because they thought 40 would kill you. you know. So they, they gave you 39. So five times he took 39. Three times he got beaten with a rod. Uh, he was stoned once, shipwrecked three times, uh, and, and all the things that happened to him on these missionary journeys, robbers and thieves and just, you know, all just bad people. You know, he, he endured being hungry, naked. He endured a lot, a risk for the faith. And, and as we go through the lesson, you know, think about, you know, how, how much risk have I taken for the faith? You know, how much risk? Because in the old sports world, we always say no pain, no gain. You know, so the same thing with our faith. You, we're, we're, you have to be a risk taker, and uh, those things, that, that's, that's part of it. And, of course, we see Paul today. Of course, on the second missionary journey, it didn't start. Uh, him and Barnabas started together, but they had a little disagreement over John Mark. Should he go with them because he didn't finish the first one? So they kind of split, you know. So it started off a little rocky. And the thing about it, uh, when we talk about a risk taker, he's taking the church to Gentiles. You know, these are all my Jews. So that's a risk in itself, you know, that he took. But, of course, he, uh, he pushed on. His second journey was 20, almost 2,700 miles, 2,700 miles. And now there wasn't no planes and wasn't no trains and any of that things. It was boats and by on land and donkey and whatever else he could travel with. So a risk taker. So he had a lot of things he had to deal with in this journey. And uh, but let's look at the first outline. It talks about Paul and Kynos, Aquila and Priscilla. And let's look at verse one. It said after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Now he departed from Athens. In Athens, again, he took some risks because uh, at the Apoc Apoc Apocalypse, I think they call it, he he met with a group of 
Greek philosophers and they debated about religion. Of course, the Greeks have a, they, they're not, they're, they're polytheistic, they're not monotheistic, but these great thinkers, and here was Paul dealing with these great thinkers and talking and convincing them and, and actually convinced a lot of them about Christ. And uh, so as he finished then, he was on his way to Corinth. Um, of course, this is a Greek area. Most of these people are Greek. They're Jews, Jews and they're Greek also, but they, they kind of blend in together. So a lot of them believed in, in the uh, Greek gods, uh, not Christ. So here he is trying to convince them and, and change some minds. Uh, Timothy and Silas does join him on this later on. Verse 2, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila and born in Pontus, lately came from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. He found these two uh, mature Christians. They were mature. They were mature in the faith. You know, they, they were steadfast, uh, Aquila and Priscilla. They were basically ran out of Rome. The Emperor Claudius, uh, one thing about the Romans, as long as you don't cause them any problems, they don't mess with you. But the Jews was an uprising. They were causing some problems. So they didn't want no problems. So they said, look, y'all need to leave, okay? Now pay your taxes. And as long as they get the monies, the Romans were, get their tax money, they're okay. But if you start causing problems, the Romans are going to ask you to, depart. And so they were basically kind of ran out because they thought that they might have been part of the, the trouble that was happening, this insurrection, uh, things that were being done in Rome, social unrest. But these were good people. Um, they were good people, good Christians. And of course, um, in verse three, we said, that, and because he was the same craft, he abode, he stayed with them. And wrought work for by their occupation, they were tent makers. Mm -hmm. So he stayed with them, and they worked together. And these two fine Christians, as Paul is on his journey, um, to on his conquest, and, and he wanted to revisit these churches. Of course, you know, he'd already seen some, but he wanted to revisit them in this second journey. He wanted to see how things were going. All right. Now, let's go to the second outline. The second outline, Paul's second journey. As we said earlier, he, this is his second journey, 2,700 miles, you know, 2,700 miles. Keep that in mind, risk taker. Yes, now, here we'll see in verse 18, it said, And Paul, after his tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave, the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in Centuria, for he had a vow. Now, of course, he leaves, but he has some troubles here before he leaves. You know, of course, he was sent to court here. Uh, Galileo, the Roman, um, the Roman procurer, basically, the Jews wanted him tried because they thought his message was against what um, the Old Testament believes. And, of course, when they sent him to trial, Galileo said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This is your problem. He hadn't violated any Roman law. You know, so therefore, you take care of it. You know, why are you sending it to me? And uh, I think it was Sothenes. Uh, he was kind of the leader of the uh, temple, and they ended up beating him up a little bit, roughing him up because, you know, they couldn't rough old Paul up. But Paul was basically let off, okay? And uh, so, but in his own people, again, showing what he had gone through for the faith. You know, his own people kind of wanted to get rid of him. But, of course, uh, some, some theologians say that maybe that was the reason he left. Of course, you know, he, they said he shaved his head. That was a, uh, something that a vow they basically took. And this ceremony basically took place in Jerusalem. Um, and, of course, uh, it says that they would burn the cutting of the hair and throw it in uh, the flames for sacrifices uh, and a sin sacrifice. But we really don't know, you know, why. But we know he, he had to move on. Uh, and just remember, he's, he's got a lot of ground to cover. But he went through a few things, just to kind of give you some background, some things he had to go through. Uh, verse 19 said, And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. And let's read 20. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not. Ephesus. Ephesus. This area 
uh, Ephesus is kind of like a, uh, a hub for transportation. You know, lots of ships coming and going, and he was, of course, he's trying to travel and get to the Syrian coast. So he tarried there a while. And he, you know, he was in, um, on his, in Corinth, I think he was there for like a year and a half. But he didn't spend that much time in Ephesus because, you know, he didn't want to miss a ship because if he'd have missed a ship, he put a while before he'd get another one. And that, that journey was 900, about 950 miles. So, you know, he had a long, he had a mission and he had things he had to get done. So, but he, he impressed these people so much that they wanted him to stay a little longer. And uh, and that that's that's pretty that that's that's pretty impressive, you know, wanting to stay a little longer. Again, remember, most of these people are not Jews. You know, these are Gentile people, people from other other races, other religion um, in this time. So his his word must have been really powerful to for them to want him to stay a little longer. Don't leave us. But he left them in good hand, good hand with Priscilla and Aquila. They, they were in good hands when he left. And 20, verse 20, um, I'm sorry, verse 21. But bade them farewell, saying, I must be by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And I and he sailed from Ephesus. Uh, promising they would come back, left them in real good hands uh, with these mature Christians that, to encourage them and to keep pressing on. Uh, and of course, you know they would pro they would definitely uh, also face some hardships, but they were prepared to do that. But he knew that they were in good hands, and of course, he sailed on. Uh, in our third outline, Apollo is introduced. Apollo is introduced. Verse twenty-four, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexander, an eloquent man and a mighty in Scripture came to Ephesus. And let's read 25 with that. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, very excited. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. Apollo, of course, you see the Greek influence in the, his name, Apollo. Apollo was the Greek god of the sun. And he was, of course, one of these people that was probably had a lot of Greek influence. And but he was a well-educated person, very, very, very good in the scriptures, um, very intelligent. Um, his doctrine was sound. He was, he, now, he knew what he knew, and he was real good. You know, he talked about what he knew. Now, he didn't know about the doctrine of grace of Christ. You know, he was lacking in that, but he knew about John the Baptist. He knew about the Old Testament. And, and it's and it's and it's kind of an encouraging because you know whatever you know you know you talk about what you know if you know it talk about it you know know what you know okay because that's all now don't talk about something you don't know <laughs> just talk about what you know and he talked about what he knew okay but let's look at verse twenty six because I think we all can get something from this it said and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard they took him into unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfect, perfectly. Now they knew he was lacking some things. Now they didn't try to embarrass him. They kind of pulled him to the side. You know, sometimes, you know, someone might get something wrong. You know, don't, don't make them look bad in front of everybody. Just pull them to the side. So I know I, a lot of times I hear people say wrong stuff and I just kind of, you know, smile and, you know, later on I like, eh, you know, you might want to check that out, <laughs> you know, but just the way they did it, you know, which shows you how mature these people were in the faith, you know, and how they pulled them aside privately and, and, and explained the way of God more accurately to him. And, of course, he, he, once he got it, he pushed on. And that's what we have to do. Well, be enthusiastic about what we do. And our last outline, recognition of the risk taker. Um. In verses 1 and 2, you will see they talk about Phoebe, a female, a female. I'm going to say that again, okay? You know, we talked about women earlier and in the Bible in their place. Uh, we think that Phoebe was one that took the letter to Rome for Paul. And, of course, what he do is, uh, is kind of a greeting. And he says in verse 3 and 4, 
Great Priscilla and Aquila, Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who I have for my life laid down, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Um, here, here he is instructed uh, ones to carry these letters, but he, he wanted them to welcome, okay, uh, upon arrival, instructions, how, how you should, you know, welcome this. But this was a very important person, uh, Phoebe, a female in, in, the, uh, in his walk and in his missionary work. Um, and Aquila, of course, Priscilla and Aquila, of course, were very welcoming to uh, Phoebe and, of course, to all the Gentiles in the area. Uh, they kept and carried out the work of Paul. Um, risk takers. Uh, and in conclusion, let, let's just say that um, there's no reward without a risk. There's none. The risk. We have to take a risk even in the faith. Uh, a risk is, has to be taken. And, and today we probably need to take more risks than, than, than ever in history. We have to take a risk. You have to stand up. Uh, a risk, of course, it, we're consumed by our faith. You know, our faith and our risk. We, we, we know we have a risk, but our faith helps us with that. You know, our, our faith, that's what we have to lean on. And uh, even though when the risk could be dangerous sometime or it might cost us something, but our faith is, is what keeps us going. Our faith will reward us. You know, be a risk taker. You know, be a risk taker and think about have, have I taken enough risk for the faith? Um, be like Paul. And just remember, he took a lot of risks. Five times, 39 lashes. Uh, I, I, I kind of question myself, how many lashes would I take? You know, I don't know if I could take five 39 times. You know, that's a whipping you. you know, that's, that's tough. But let's be risk takers for the faith. And let's be mindful of the faith. And let's carry on this thing like Paul. Let's look at it like our forefathers as they fought for civil rights and, and on all the things that we have today. Risk takers. Don't be afraid to be a risk taker. Remember, the reward is great in the end. Thank you very much.
church family. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. And I just want to welcome all those who have tuned in this morning uh, to GGBC's uh, Sunday morning service. It truly is a pleasure to stand before you this morning. Uh, we just want to get God some praise this morning and thank him for his mercy and grace. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. And uh, also, before we continue in our service, uh, beginning with our opening prayer, we'd like to keep uh, Deacon Lewis Carter and his entire family uh, in prayer for the loss of his mother. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and also, Trustee uh, Larry Carter and Willima, uh, Wilhelmina Carter, uh, Mrs. Hilton, also, we'd like to keep Donna and uh, David Harris uh, family in the passing of their brother, of his brother and daughter. Amen? Amen. And also, uh, we'd like to keep the Frails family, uh, Pamela Frails. Uh, we'd like to keep them in prayer. And, and our very own uh, Reverend Vincent Peterson, the passing of his, uh, his sister, his only sister. And uh, also, we're going to keep uh, Robert Bobby Turner. Uh, lift him, his family up in prayer and, and also the Carswell family and, and, and we just got to keep each other lifted up in prayer in, the, in this trying time amen? amen you know we all go through some things and, and prayer is our is our answer yes, it is. it'll give us peace and strength when nothing else is available so uh, let us bow our heads the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob O oh Lord our God, you are our refuge and our strength. You are ever present help in the times of trouble when it seems like our world is crumbling all around us, when, when we are thrown around by the storms of life. Father, we ask you this morning to take away our fears and we are weak, you are our strength, Father God. So we come before you as humbly as we know how this morning, asking that you just created us a clean heart this morning and a steadfast spirit. We're asking, Father God, that you just forgive us for our sins, Father God, that we've created knowingly and unknowingly, Father. Lord, we ask, Father God, that your spirit just have its way this morning. Bless those families this morning who are going through, who have lost loved ones this morning, Father God. We know, Father God, that we just ask that your spirit move and give them peace and strength, Father God, in this, in this time of sorrow, Father. We ask, we know that you are a God of, of love, Father God. So we ask that you pour out your love this morning, not just in those individuals, but all over the world, Father God, in every church and every human being, Father God. Yeah. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity this morning, Father God, for we know that this is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible tells us that we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Father God, because we're not promised this day, Father God, but we just thank you, Father God, for breathing life into our souls another day. Lord, we ask that you just bless the man who's bring forth the food, Father God. Not just food for our physical body, but food for our spiritual body, Father God. That will just strengthen us and, and give us the ability to keep on keeping on, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 We just want to thank God this morning for his goodness. So this morning, our scripture will come from 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. And the word of God reads... 
And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, remember that's a little g there, do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judea, and left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under the Jupiter tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a Jupiter tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did not eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights until Orab, the mount of God, and he came there unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, That dost thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I even, I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? The reading of God's word this morning. Amen. Amen. And may those who heard it be blessed by it. Amen. Now, our offering. Amen. In our offering this morning, you can uh, cash app GGB C A U G. Amen. Or you can use Zelle, uh, Gardner Grove GGBC at gmail.com or you can just drop it off in our in the envelope in our secure mailbox amen or you can just mail your tithes and offerings to the church I think God will really appreciate that amen, amen. so let us bow our heads for offertory prayer oh heavenly father we come at this hour just lifting up your name and thanking you for providing for us father God for protecting us for keeping us in the palm of your hand, Father God. And Lord, we come just to be obedient to your word this morning to bring forth uh, just 10%, Father God, of what you have called for this morning, Father God. We ask that you just breathe upon our tithes and offering and multiply it, Father God, that it may be more than enough to take forth your word to a dying world, Father. We thank you, Father God, and continue to bless Gardner Grove as a whole, continue to bless the members, Father God, we ask, Lord, that you just continue to give us faith to trust in your word, Father God, because you said, Lord, you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out all your blessings upon those who believe. In your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Now we have another song uh, before the word, amen.
Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. What a blessed testimony to declare to the world how we are sold out. Amen. Because the spirit lives in me. I'm sold out. We bless the Lord. We greet you this morning and we thank God for this privilege to come to share with us the word of truth from the book of first Kings. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Always for being the Lord of our lives. Our heavenly father. He's our creator. Jesus Christ, amen, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and our Keeper. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just ask now that you would anoint and appoint at this hour as you have chosen us to be the vessel to bless your people. We just pray now, Lord, that you will speak to me and then speak through me, Lord, and use us, Lord, to bless your people and may the word fall on good ground. Father God, it is our desire this morning not to just talk it, but to walk it. We're desiring this morning, Father God, to be obedient to the word that we hear come from the scripture and the word that we know. Father God, we are called to be a blessing because we're blessed. May we do so each and every day of our lives. We have entered to worship. May we exit to serve. And Father God, may we serve you every day of our lives. For it's to your glory for our good. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, uh, giving all honor to all whom honor is due. Thank God for my wife this morning. Amen. We acknowledge the Godhead first and thank God for my wife, the officers, the members, uh, the ministers that are here. We just bless God for your presence. And again, we just give uh, God nothing but praise. Amen. For Trustee Ivy Huger with such a powerful another Sunday school lesson. Amen. It's just awesome how God continues to, amen, use these women in ministry. Amen. Amen. Let us not try to relegate people to lesser uh, functions in ministry. Let's try to elevate everyone. Amen. Amen. Because a woman is to grow in knowledge and in holiness uh, with God just like a man. Amen. Amen. And then one day we, we pray that our children even grow up unto a more mature man and woman in Christ. Amen. We just decided that everyone grow in Christ and in the saving grace. Amen. Wherein uh, Apollos needed to be instructed in the saving grace, someone took him under their arms. Amen. We need to take someone under our arms and instruct them in the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's nothing in our hand we bring, but to the cross we cling. Amen. That sums it all up. Let us look to First Kings, verse 19. You may secure your uh, device. Amen. Or you may uh, get what I call word perfect, the Bible, the perfect word. Amen. First Kings 19. It's been read into your hearing, so I'm just going to pick up, uh, pick out a few of the select verses. I want to pick out verse 4 especially, talking about, here it is. Well, well, let's get verse 1, that puts us in context. And he have told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Let's drop down to verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey in the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and he said it is enough. Now O Lord take away my life for I am not better than any than my fathers. Amen. We're going to jump on over to verse 10. Because we need a reality check, amen? A check up from the neck up. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, for the Lord and of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away uh, and they seek my life to take it away I believe today God would have us to know amen that the Lord thy God is with you amen with the uh, theme what are you doing here uh, that's found in verse 9 and this is when God uh, breaks through and he gets Elijah's attention amen through this quiet small still voice and he came thither unto the cave and lodged there and beheld the word of the Lord came to him 
And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? What are you doing here? I believe God is asking a lot of people that question today. What, what, what are you doing here? Amen. And, uh, you know, e Elijah uh, does, does not uh, answer God. Amen. Uh, in fact, in 13, you know, God has to come back and, uh, re re and rephrase the question, ask it again, because uh, what are you doing here? Uh, the, the answer is nothing. And I pray that's not the answer for you, you, or you. Amen. That God is asking the question, what are you doing here? Amen. Uh, in the area of praying, serving, and giving, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm reminded that I believe God is speaking through a small, still voice today. We're in this pandemic, but God is speaking. Uh, I just believe that he's speaking today, my brother and my sister, and we're going to find in our lesson, you know, he, he, he had a great earthquake, he had uh, a strong wind, and he even sent fire demonstrating his majestic power, but there was no message in any of that. I, I know a lot of things are happening, everyone trying to interpret messages out of everything from the snowstorm out west, amen, to the rain and cold here, amen, but my brother and my sister, God is speaking through a still small voice amen and here he is speaking to the prophet my brothers and sisters amen through a quiet still voice what are you doing here amen i believe god would ask people today because i've had different ones concerned about when are we coming back to church i believe god wants to know through this pandemic amen god doesn't need a building for worship Amen. God doesn't need a church, amen, for people to praise him. Amen. God is asking today, not when are you coming back to church, but when are you coming back to God? I'm going to say that again. Not when are you coming back to church, but when are you coming back to God? Do you know you can worship, amen, and you don't have to be here right there where you are? God wants us to find him wherever we are. Wherever you show up, amen, you're there, and amen, God ought to, amen, bear witness, amen, and you ought to have some influence on the situation, whether it's on your job, in your school, in your home, amen, because you're there, the light of the gospel of God should show up in that place. I'm here to tell you right now, I, my brothers and my sisters, I believe every home right now should just light up, amen, that is tuned in, amen, just because you're there and you answering the question to God, why am I here? And if you're in the worship experience this morning, why are you here? Amen. Are you here to obey God? Are you here to love God? If you are, why don't you start loving the person next to you? Why don't you start loving others? Amen. The Lord thy God is with you. Amen. As God has said in his word, I promise you to be with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Amen. Therefore, it's up to us to believe because God has promised that he will never leave. God is with you right here, right now. Amen. And if there's anything wrong, amen, if you don't feel close to God, God, ha God has not moved. Amen. If anybody moved, it's us. Amen. We need to get back to God. My brothers and my sisters, amen, I just believe God is ministering through the prophet today to minister to us, amen, it's time to get close to God, amen, we need to get back to God, amen, and instead of worrying about coming back to church, let us come back to God, amen, amen. Uh, I want to say this about Elijah, the first thing he does according to our outline is he flees to Mount Sinai, amen. After getting the news, amen, he flees to Mount Sinai, God has to uh, give a reality check, amen, and he has to give his prophet a commission. So God commissions his prophet. And then in the final outline, when God is, when God is in command, there's always hope, amen. God is in central command right now, amen. I want you to know, amen, I don't know who you have in your life that speaks truth into your situation, amen. It should always come from central command. I know back in my day, uh, when I was a young boy, amen, we would always pick up the phone and, uh, well, we didn't have a phone, so let me back up there, amen, but I heard about it, amen. You pick up the phone, Amen. And you would uh, dial the operator and the operator would connect you.
But later years, amen, we still didn't have a phone, but amen, I understood we had the rotary dial. So from about the 60s to the 80s, we had rotary dial and even a little touch tone. And after the 80s to the 2000s, we got the, uh, what you would call it, the uh, uh, cell phones, amen. And, uh, we th we th I thought we was uptown then, my brother and my sister, but later, in the 2000s to 2020, we have now a smartphone. And all you got to do is call Siri. Amen. But I stopped by to tell you, my brother and my sister, amen. I want you to know that God is the first, amen, wireless communication specialist. Amen. And instead of calling Siri, why don't somebody say call him by his name? His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Instead of wanting to know Siri, amen, Siri can't give you the message that Jesus can. And that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for a message in this situation with Elijah. My brother and my sister, we recognize here that the Lord uh, displayed his power to Elijah. Amen. First of all, when Elijah, amen, was there hiding in a cave. My brother and my sister, we find that this brother is now hiding in a cave. And he has run, and he has run, and now he's running 250 miles away from where his ministry is. Amen. Trying to get away from this woman, Jezebel. She has promised, by this time tomorrow, I will take your life. Amen. You see, the thing about it, what happened is Elijah had just finished a great spiritual victory. And I want to say this to you, uh, amen, after coming to church and getting your praise on, I want you to know, I don't care how high you go, amen, there are some firefighters and sharpshooters going to try to put your fire out and bring you down, amen, from the devil's camp now, amen, amen. But here it is, Elijah has done all of this great thing and has prayed and called down fire, amen, not, not only a fire from heaven on a sacrifice, and then he actually wiped out and took the lives of all the false prophets, amen, and Jezebel now, amen, didn't have too much of a problem with him calling down fire from heaven, but he has taken away her palm readers, amen, and my brother, my sister, amen, she can't do without her palm readers, my brother, my sister, amen, because they were prayers by donations only but my brother my sister all you need to do is be a high priest of God and just fall down on your knees and pray and God will come see about you therefore my brothers and my sisters I just believe today that the first thing we need to do is that we need to always pray ASAP always say a prayer and do it ASAP my brother my sister Amen, because I believe today, my brothers and sisters, amen, that it would be the better thing for Elijah to have prayed to God rather than running from Jezebel. And, and I'm reminded of King David, amen, running from his son Absalom, running from King Saul. My brother, my sister, I'm telling you, pray to God in the good times like you pray to God in the bad times and you won't have some of the bad times that you're having, my brother, my sister. In the good times, while things are going good, before the pandemic hit, before all of the trouble that seems to come your way, pray to God in good times. The way we pray to him in bad times, I believe everything will be all right. Therefore, my brother, my sister, whatever you do, get close to God. Lean on him. And if you will lean on him, he won't let you fall. I came by to tell you this morning, my brother and my sister, he will never let you fall. And the psalmist says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. If you will just keep leaning on the Lord, leaning on the everlasting arm. Here it is, a faithful servant, amen, running from Jezebel, and not only that, my brother and my sister, he's hiding in a cave, seemingly there, he is like most of us, you know, he got, got, got this uh, facade and this uh, uh, pseudo uh, saintology about him where he just, I'm just here waiting on God. But my brother, my sister, amen, when God asked the question, what are you doing here, amen, the simple answer would have been nothing. But look in verse 10, uh, he went on to tell God everything that God already knew. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts. 
for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. They have thrown down thy altars. They have slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, am left. And they seek to take my life. My brothers and my sisters, here it is a man that is exaggerating a situation. Amen. They exaggerating. Talking about the whole nation of the northern kingdom. Amen. Are seeking to take my life. It's only one person who is threatening your life, Jezebel. And why are you saying they, my brother, my sister, they seek my life to take it away? There's only one person that is seeking his life. So he's exaggerating it. And pretty much the way we are, amen, we exaggerate things before the Lord. But I want you to know, everything he was telling God, God already knew. The answer to God's question would have been nothing. But he came up with this long laundry list, amen. And I believe that there's someone today, my brother and my sister, amen, God will say, what are you doing here? Well, I come to get my praise on. I, I came to get my breakthrough, uh, amen. I want to go to the next level. There's nothing wrong with, with any of all that stuff, amen. But God wants to know, what are you doing here? My brothers and my sisters, amen. I alone am left. I just believe that he it is a prophet that is hundreds of miles away from his appointed ministry, amen, walking in self-righteousness, walking in pity, and walking in pride. Have mercy, my brothers and sisters, amen. Here it is, but my brothers and sisters, even in that, he continues to exaggerate, but God gives him a reality check when he says, I alone am left. God is going to take him up and show him that there are 7,000, amen, uh, faithful that have not bowed their knee to Baal, but are committed and faithful to the Lord Jehovah God, amen. You're not the only one, my brother, my sister, but here it is. God is going to come with the wind. The wind is going to blow so hard till it breaks the rocks in two, and, amen, and it even casts and cracks the mountains, my brother, my sister. This is God. And then an earthquake comes, my brother, my sister. And then a, a fire comes. God causes all of this. And Elijah sees the splendor of God passing by. But there was no message in any of that. My brother, my sister, amen. God is just showing his splendor. Amen. To his prophet. Amen. God is letting him know how all-powerful God is. Amen. And God doesn't need you, Mr. Prophet. God can get this job done without you. Here you are running away from God, asking, amen, that not only take my life, I want to give up my calling. He really didn't want to die, but my brother and my sister, that's how we talk sometimes. Just take me on out of here, amen. But my brother and my sister, why don't you just obey God? I was reminded this morning to honor God with the first fruits. And I thank God for Cash App, and I thank God for my wife uh, for, for the self-check. Amen. The Cash App, we can give God first every week now. We can just go on Sunday evening, we can just Cash App God. Before the week gets started, we can Cash App God. <laughs> but then she got me and said, you know, now, uh, we, we, need to, we need to go on up on him now. Whoa, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Amen. So we, we, we went up on him, amen, because, uh, listen, honor the Lord with thy substance. Well, I, I, all I want to do is just tell him, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. What a friend we have in Jesus. Man, I just want to get my praise on. He said, honor them with your first fruits. Amen. And I thank God for just being obedient to Almighty God. Amen. Again, we say God knows us better than we know ourselves. And God is asking these questions not to get answers, but he's asking these questions to bring a reality check to his prophet so that the prophet can see where he is. God knows where he is. Amen. The prophet is short. Amen. And he is not obeying God running from Jezebel. He's not obeying God 
asking Siri when it need to call on Jesus early in the morning, late at night. Amen. You need to call on Jesus and he'll make everything all right. See here when Elijah flees to Mount Sinai, the first thing he did was he made a complaint against the generation, amen, of the northern kingdom. They have failed you, God. Amen. The past generation failed. The present generation has not done any better. And I alone am left. My brother and my sister, we get ready for our next outline. God is calling him, since you see what has happened in the past, since you see what's going on in the present, why don't you help me prepare things for the future? God is saying, I want you to help equip the future generation by anointing two kings and one prophet. The Lord brought a display of power to the prophet to show him that he didn't need him, and after the reality check, God gives him the assignment. Amen. I mean, God was doing good at, at Gardner Grove before I got here. Amen. And, 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 and God is going to do just as good or better after I'm gone. God don't need you. God wants you to know you need God. And my brothers and my sisters, here it is. Amen. The man of God. Amen. Has now, according to the second outline, he has now received the commission from God. God is ready to commission him after he brought a display of power to show the prophet that I don't really need you. And I thank God, my brother and my sister, God has gotten my attention that he doesn't need Copeland. Amen. And I want you to know, sitting wherever you are, God doesn't need you. Amen. My brother and my sister, I want you to know if you think you're that indispensable, put your finger in a bucket of water and then just pull it right back out. And you won't even know where your finger was. My brother, my sister, that's just where we are. Amen. Our life is but as a vapor here for a moment and then it is gone. And so why not make up our mind that we're going to do the best thing we can do for the Lord while we have a chance. God commissioned Elijah. Amen. His prophet. Amen. That was a time for the earthquake. That was a time for the fire. And that was a time for the strong wind. Amen. In my day we had earth, wind, and fire, my brother and my sister. Amen. But I thank God, amen, those were just singers on the scene. But I'm talking about real earthquake, wind, and fire from God. There is a time for God to majestically move. But in this situation, my brother and my sister, we need to hear from God. And we need a message. And the message came through a quiet, still voice it will come when you make time to get alone with God amen one of my desires and I wish it upon you every week every day I want to have more time alone with God amen I don't need any television I don't need any phone calls I don't need any visits I don't need any social media I don't need a smartphone I just want to have a little talk with God amen every time I hit the Siri by accident I turn it right off amen because I know all of my help comes from the Lord who has made the heavens and earth and he's never failed me yet my brother and my sister God is not Always using that which is loud, impressive, or dramatic. He speaks through a gentle, loving voice with a quiet persuasiveness. That's right. You're doing right. She cussed you out, but you're smiling and treating her right. He didn't do it. He didn't say it right, but you got the right attitude. You're not giving people what they give you. You're treating people better than they treat you. I promise this, and I'll tell you this here, meet me on any day. I'll love you better than you can love me. Amen. We bless God. Let us move to our final outline. I just want to say about God commissioned his prophet. I just believe, my brothers and sisters, in the midst of the pandemic, God still speaks. He wants us to get closer to him, lean on him, Come back to church, but make sure you return to God. Verse, the third outline is when God is in command, there's always hope. 
Amen. Here it is. God is in command as always. Hope It's time to stop weeping over the past. It's time to stop running away from the present. It's time to start preparing for the future. And God's prophet is now. is going to anoint Haziel, king of Assyria. Then he's going to anoint Jehu, king over Israel. And after he does that, He's going to anoint Elijah, his successor. Amen, my brother, my sister. Amen. Stop wanting to die. Amen, my brother, my sister. Stop being so depressed, stuck up in a cave, in a cave, doing nothing, waiting on God. My brother, my sister, I just believe here today, God assures Elijah that he had 7,000 who had been faithful to Jehovah. So God would say today, stop hesitating and stop this re- reservation stop having reservations on the word of God and stop hesitating in doing what he's told you to do because God has called us to sanctification not isolation he was isolated in a cave God has set us apart to be sanctified and a work to be done and that's when Elijah got it amen one night my brother and my sister God restored his perspective and I just believe today my brother my sister amen God would have us to understand that if you want to get this thing right prepare for the future prepare to receive what God would have you to receive God is preparing this man to bless the nation for the future generation Haziel has a work Jehu has a work Elijah is going to have a word and a work Amen. Elisha, let me put it that way, get get the two right. There's Elijah that is the prophet on hand now. Elisha is coming after Elijah. Amen. And some call him Elisha. But either way you pronounce it, my brother and my sister, we own it, that we, we good. But what he did was he came apart unto God. He came apart because he was so depressed that he wanted to give up his calling and wanted to give up his life and when he met God in that quiet still voice amen my brother and my sister he renewed his commission amen and God commissioned him to go and anoint two kings and his successor God may want you to stop complaining about how sad the situation and how sad the world is God wants you to know today if you will come apart and recognize that God is all you have God is all you need. And my brother and my sister, God will have you to know you don't have to run from Jezebel because the battle is really not yours anyway. The battle belongs to the Lord. My brother and my sister, amen. When Elijah, amen, before he started this situation, amen, he told uh, King Ahab that it was going to rain. Amen. And he sent his prophet up, amen, to look for a cloud. Amen. He kept going back and forth until the prophet came back. Amen. His servant said, I see the, uh, a cloud the size of a man's hand. I want you to know small things are but a beginning with God. Amen. My brother and my sister, a cloud the, sound, the size of a man's hand was representative that a powerful thunderstorm was coming. I want you to know today, God may be showing you a small beginning. Amen. But this small beginning is only representative of a great harvest and a great end. I want you to know that this small hand represented, amen, a storm because, amen, it had not rained, my brother, my sister, amen, over the period of this time. But my brother, my sister, amen, God said to Elijah that it was going to rain and it did rain. My brother, my sister, I'm here to tell you today, amen, small thing, just get your focus on God. Don't focus, amen, on what things people are saying. Don't focus, my brother, my sister, on the things going around you. Therefore, I say to you today, my brother, my sister, amen, it's good, amen, if we would just make up in our mind that we're not going to, amen, focus, amen, and get our eyes on what has happened in the past, and we're not going to get caught up in what is going on all around, but we're going to keep looking to the future, because God has a future, and you can claim your possession, and not only that, but in the process, God is in charge of the process. You can look to God. He knows both the beginning and the end of the process. And that's what Elijah recognized. God knew the beginning as 
well as the end. Our brothers and sisters, my brother, my sister, come apart unto God and get your focus to look straight ahead and not live distracted lives. Because when the enemy comes to distract us, my brother, my sister, we ask ourselves the question today, why should you be sad? The Lord is king of heaven. Amen. He is king of heaven. And heaven sing because God reigns. And let the earth be glad. We should not be sad because this is our father's world. Amen, my brother, my sister, the wrong seem to be so strong in these evil and last days. He is still ruler yet. So, oh God, let us never forget. I thank you, Lord. Amen, that you are with us always. And I'm telling you today, as I testify, amen, I'm not going to look behind me at the mistakes that I've already made because there is a hope living on the inside of me. There ought to be a hope living on the inside of you. No matter what's said or done, your debt has already been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ on yonder's cross. And we ought to declare, Lord, I'm trusting you now because I made a vow. I came to Christ. I made a vow and I don't want to break it. I don't want to break the vow that I made to you, Lord. So I'm trusting in you now by keep by keeping my eyes on you, trusting you, following you, believing, Lord, that you said it. There's a small, small boy. He speaks to me every day, wakes me up early in the morning, telling me to stop weeping over the past. Stop trying to run away from the responsibilities of the present and start preparing for the future because God has a great harvest coming. God has, amen, a great rain coming, a early former and latter rain. God has a blessing coming through just for you. I stopped by to tell you today, my brother and my sister, I just believe that God would have us to know that we ought to know that he is with us everywhere we go. And we ought to answer the question today, why are you here if you're not doing anything, get up off the seat of do nothing and let God use you to prepare for the future. Stop running away from the present and stop worrying about the past. If you do those things, God will bless and God will see you through. We just believe that God would have us to know today that he made a promise and he's not going to break it. He said, I'll be with you always to the end of the world. He made a promise, and he is up to us to believe, but God has promised to never leave. If you feel like you're out there all alone and you're the only one, I want you to know God is telling you you're not the only one. You're not indispensable. God has people that is a remnant, and they are nothing but his chosen ones that are standing firm on the word of God, my brothers and sisters, and you can do the same. If there be one that would like to know him in the free pardon of his sin, just trust him now. Father God, I'm trusting you now. I just believe that my debt was paid on Calvary's cross. And just by simple faith and a simple gospel will make me a child of God. And I can be made a child of God just sitting right here where I am. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. It's to our glory, to his glory, but it's always to our good in Jesus' name. The church said amen. amen. We look now to our Father in heaven for our benediction. Amen. Let us close in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day, the day that the Lord has made. We're here to rejoice, and we will be glad in it. There's something inside me. There's a hope that the debt has been paid. Father God, help us to walk with that assurance and to do as your servant did. Hear this small, quiet, persuasive, still voice of our Father in heaven. It's to your glory for our good. May the grace of Almighty God, love communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, rest abide, rule, and keep the hearts of these thy people this day, now, henceforth, and forever. In the church of God, say amen. Amen, amen and amen. As always, 
Thank you for tuning in to our live stream service. Next week's service will begin at 11 o'clock a.m. We hope you enjoy today's service and experience the love of God in this fellowship. See you next Sunday and have a blessed week. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you till we meet.